Hello friends and welcome to this podcast by Think Think Reviews exploring the adventures of Sherlock Holmes's much younger sister Enola. By now you must have gone through the reviews of previous books in this series including The Case of the Missing Marquis, The Case of the Left-Handed Lady, The Case of the Bizarre Bookcase, The Case of the Peculiar Pink Fan and The Case of the Cryptic Crinoline. Continuing the series, we come to book number six called The Case of the Disappearing Duchess. Let us take a look at the cover page of this book. As you know, we have been pursuing a particular series that has all matching cover pages, but there are quite a few editions available with a variety of themes. The whole series that we have been looking at is illustrated with a thin, tall girl featuring in old-fashioned clothes in a variety of color schemes. This one is made up of black, orange and blue. Enola is driving a cab, a whip in one hand and reins in another which is quite intriguing by itself and the little circles around the doorway of this story holds a cap, a dog, a raven, an amulet, feminine accessories and a candle. Like the rest of this series of illustrated covers, all the symbols are part of the story and you will find the references to this as, as you read through the book. Not a standout cover page for casual browsers with its hard background, it's difficult to pick from a stack of books in a bookshop, but it will be appreciated by fans of the series. Let's take a look at the story then. It is July 1889 and Sherlock Holmes is paying a visit to their ancestral home in Ferndale Hall where a mysterious package had arrived in the night. The package is covered in lots of symbols to ward off evil eyes, but underneath it all, Sherlock can see the crescent mum and ivy. It is clear then that their mother has finally sent a message for Enola. In London, Enola has just arrived at work. She is now Mrs. Jacobson and lives at the Professional Women's Club. As Mrs. Tupper's kidnapping and following events meant that her brothers now may know all about that little life of hers. Mrs. Jacobson is Dr. Ragustine's associate and when a distressed duke walks through the door that morning looking for Dr. Ragustine to find his lost wife, she is there to assist. The Duke Louis Orlando del Campo of the Catalonian royal household is married to the beautiful and noble Lady Blanche Fleur. One day the Duquesa, Duchess in English, went out on Baker Street with her ladies and was lured underground by an old crone asking for help. When she didn't come back up for a while, both ladies, called Mary, went to the underground train station but the Duchess had just vanished. Enola's and Sherlock's paths start crossing as he manages to find her during one of her visits to Florence Nightingale's house to deliver the package received from Lady Eudoria Holmes and then on as both brother and sister are looking for the Duchess Blanchefleur. As Enola ventures into the dangerous walls of London's underground tunnels, she discovers how the lady in question could have been abducted. What she would be suffering and whether she is alive remains subject to imagination. After a few thrilling episodes, Enola enlists help of both her brothers to rescue the Duchess. Will they bond as a family while on this quest together? And what is in the package from her mother? Answers are in the book. Let us look at the Team Thinker Beauty's review now. 
In the previous book, as she sorted through the ribbons stitched on a crinoline underlay in Farm the Home for More Than One Lost Birds, in this book, it is time for Enola to rescue yet another woman in distress, while she may finally also have a chance to reconcile with her family. The title of this book is in the rhyming Victorian fashion as well, but it also is quite reminiscent of the first book of the series, where a marquis had gone missing and now a duchess has disappeared. Although the titles are in sync, the stories are slightly different. In this book is also more about the mother-daughter relationship and finding familial love and comfort for Enola. The disappearing duchess is an example of fragile womanhood of Victorian times and as opposites of Enola as possible in terms of physical capabilities. While Enola is strong, healthy and ready to climb over walls and trees in her path, Blanche Fleur cannot even stand on her own. She has been wearing a corset since the age of six and now needs one 24 hours as her legs are incapable of supporting even her own weight. Although she is as compassionate and mindful of the poverty around her as Enola, I see the poor on the streets, here in London, one cannot go out of doors without encountering the blind beggars, the crippled soldiers, the frizzy-haired women selling nosegays of flowers, the ragged gypsy children, and I pity them so. Her husband, on the other hand, is a Spanish duke, an aristocrat, who has not much experience of how the rest of the world lives. The Duke said the world underground with the characteristics distressed of a gentleman, disdainful of this newfangled, dark and noxious mode of travel. As only lower classes generally used London's cheapest form of transportation. Even though the locomotives stored their smoke in chambers behind the engines, Releasing it only at ventilation shafts provided for that purpose, still the underground reeked of steamy gaseous emissions, plus an overwhelming effluence of unwashed humanity. We continue to look at the abject living conditions of London of those days as we find out more about the beginnings of its underground railway system. He was a tosher lowest of the low amongst the worthy poor. I had seen them emerge from the sivers redolence of underground creatures, rotten fish, rubbish, and offal and waste and slime of all kinds, for the sake of finds such as wood, metal, coins, or occasionally, eureka, a dead body that could be looted of its cash and clothing. I also quite like the portrait in the following sentence of the bustling place that it was, with a place for almost everyone. Beer wagons and bread wagons, water carriers, pony carts, barouches and broms passed in constant, necessarily slow procession. An omnibus trundled by, advertising the inevitable Nestle's milk. Many and various peoples also traverse the cobbles of the square. A fish porter with a basket of fresh pollock in on his head. A bill sticker carrying his long brush and a bucket of paste with a roll of advertisements under his arm. A ginger cake seller. Promenading ladies. Businessmen in top hats. Laughing children swinging from a rope they had tied to the top of a lamppost and a hokey-pokey vendor who had set up his churn and folding table in the midst of everything. While the last book had cryptic crinoline, this one has a red fern dress, a quite the latest addition in fashion, an extravagant garment that leads to its owner facing dire consequences for wearing it. 
While Enola uses clothes to her advantage, creating various disguises, she also sees the effects they can have on people. Laundered and starched ladies did not generally roam the tracks. Appropriate dress is just as important to the lower classes as it is to the upper ones. As I mentioned before though, this book is also a lot more about Enola. For last one year, she has been looking for her mother, for a message, for a sign, for something to tell her where her mother was, what was she doing, whether she was okay, whether she loved her, and so on. And the expected letter finally arrives and brings the bittersweet closure she has been waiting for. One must know oneself, how much one can take upon oneself, what one can bear. One cannot be a mother without first being a person. Family, husband and children should not be allowed, as is so often the case, to steal a woman's selfhood in her dreams. As she understands her mother better, so do her brothers understand her better now. Looks like they all may have a shared future after all. In, in summary, it is yet another Enola Holmes adventure that sees her find what is lost in more than one ways and also lays the path for future adventures where she may not find herself struggling alone all the time. The Thinker Buse rating for the series remains at around 7.5 out of 10. Do let us know if you have read this series and have enjoyed these books or any other works that are of similar nature and we will review them here for all the other listeners. Until the next time, thank you for listening.